Hello there everybody, you are very welcome to today's yoga class. My name is Deirdre of Antheus Holistic Therapies and I am based in the Yoga Well Studios in Shotland in County Mead. These yoga classes are brought to you today with the Mead County Council service and it's our summer program for 2021. So you're very welcome along. If you want to grab your yoga mat, you can grab a blanket, maybe an eye pillow if you have one or a clean sock or something to place over your eyes and that's it you can take off your socks and pop them somewhere well done sitting tall we're going to take a nice deep breath in and out we're going to use our yoga bell and this will allow us quieten our mind to begin our yoga class today. I'm going to ring the bell again and invite you now to close your eyes. And when you no longer hear a sound, opening your eyes again. So listen really, really carefully until you no longer can hear the bell. Well done. We'll do it one more time, closing down your eyes. And you should all have your eyes open now. So let's begin. I'm going to pop on our yoga glasses. Super. Pop them on upside down. Now breaking them apart and placing them onto your lap, we're going to use these four words to help us quieten our mind and meditate. And they are peace begins with me. Place your thumb and forefinger together and you say peace. Then middle finger and thumb begins ring finger and thumb with and baby finger and thumb me peace begins with me let's try it peace begins with me say it again peace begins with me say it nice and loud peace begins with me and again peace begins with me say it nice and quiet Now close your eyes and whisper. Now you're going to say it in your mind. And again. One last time. And when you're finished opening your eyes, we're going to start by doing an OM together. So breathing in. Oh. Fantastic, very well done. We have a lovely story today. This story is called Johnny McGorry and the Farmyard Face That and it is written by Emma Jane Leeson of Johnny McGorry Stories. And so in this story it's talking about autumn time. And you know in autumn time the leaves fall down from the trees. I know a song. So if you join me spreading your legs nice and wide, stretching up. Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down. Watch them falling. Stay here. Flare thin. And out. Very good. Coming over one of your legs. So we're going to go red and yellow and orange and brown. 
Orange and brown, orange and brown. Hold their leg. Red and yellow and orange and brown. Watch them falling. Stay here. Very good. Walk your hands over, stretching to the other side. Beautiful. Well done. We're going to come into a nice cross-legged position. Bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Give them a little squeeze and roll your shoulder blades together on your back. Nice and comfy. We're going to do our leaf breathing. So you can either hold out your hand or if you have something like a leaf, you can get that. I'm going to trace around one side of our leaf, just watching it. Our finger traces to the top and back down. If you have a real leaf, that would be great too. I'm going to do it again and when you're tracing it up, we're going to breathe in and out. And again, breathing in, tracing up and tracing down to the other side. Super. So you can use your breathing in and out any time that you might feel a bit scared or a bit anxious or upset. And it can be a great way of just settling down, settling down your mind, your heart and your body. It can be great to give the mind something to do when you have those visiting feelings. Give it a job to trace a leaf, maybe smell a flower and even if you don't have one in front of you you can use your imagination and like I said you can use your hand. Ready for a story? So sit tall for a story. So it's Johnny McGor McGorry and the Farmyard Feaster by Emma Jane Leeson and I hope you like it, it's a brilliant story. I'll tell you a story about Johnny McGorry, his sister Lily May and their trusty dog Rory. These clever two are five and eight years old. They're usually good, but they're sometimes bold. Autumn, or unfolver, is a special season in Ireland. Every year, crops in the field are fully grown and trees show off the fruit they bear. Let's be nice tall trees. Stretching out your branches, and if you feel comfortable, you can lift your leg. And imagine you have leaves falling from your branches. Fantastic. Let's go other side. Stretching those branches out again. Standing tall. And you can stay here if that feels okay for you. You can bring it a bit further. And the leaves are falling down from the trees. Super. As the Deloga change colour and the temperature start to drop, Nefermiori are busy with the harvest, reaping their rewarding crop. Granny and Grandad Magori live on a beautiful farm set amongst the rolling hill, the rolling green fields and full of countryside charm. Working hard all year to provide nutritious food for everyone, they celebrate with a big giant feesta when the harvest is done. Johnny and Lily May love helping out their grandparents every year. Everyone has special jobs on the farm that they love so dear. You have a great big green tractor here. What colour will your tractor be? Spreading our legs up. Have you got a John Deere? Or what make a tractor have you got? Let's drive around the farm on your tractor. When you go fast, or is it a nice slow tractor? You decide. Very good. Daddy and Grandad, with their good neighbour Jim, drive the huge tractors in the field. 
Harvesting the wheat, oats and barley with the combine, gathering up the yield. Let's do a big combine. Arms out in front, bend those elbows. And placing our forehead out, pushing forward like the combine. And back, let's do it again. Walking back and one last time, bend your elbows, forehead to your hands and pushing and moving your body forward like a combine harvester. Well done. Mammy and Granny work hard on the feast in between their other jobs. Soup, spuds, bacon and cabbage all smell delicious. <sighs> Take a big smell in the kitchen. <sighs> Cooking on the hobs with soda bread and apple tart in the range. The smells are hard to resist, but Mammy and Granny are firm. Don't eat until dinner time, kids, they insist. So let's see. Let's do our big pot sitting on the hob, feet together, and stirring the soup, taking the good smell in. Oh, it smells very good. Other side. And taking a big breath in, smelling the soup. Oh, it's so good. The children need to pick the thirty from the orchard by the cattle guard. Pulling on their bootashi and koti, they head off, skipping up the yard. Okay, you gotta pull on our bootashi, legs out. One and two. And putting on our koti. One and two. Super. So you can stay like this. Rory loves playing with his best pal, Rua, the red setter farm dog. So let's do Rua pose. Curl those toes under, lifting your tail. And maybe giving your tail a little wag. Very good. They're bounding towards the orchard when out jumps a sad looking hog. Oh, let's do our piggy pose. Bring onto your back, boys and girls. Bring your knees together at your chest. And then bringing the knees out wide. Oh, that's a sad hog. Danny, the Irish greyhound, pig looks so glum. Rory and Rua ask, what's the matter? I'm really hungry, Danny says. Granny forgot to feed us with all the harvest clatter. Oh no, says Lily May, who overhears the worry and conversation. Johnny, we need to feed the animals. It's an emergency situation. <gasps> Johnny thinks it's strange that Grandad would forget the farmyard crew. But as he's about to say this, Lily Mae shouts, I know what to do. Let's hold a fun farmyard harvest feast for everyone to enjoy right now. We'll do the food while Rory and Rua tell them, starting with Olivia the Dexter cow. Let's do Olivia pose. Ready? Moo. Very good, let's do it again. Moo. Great stuff. First they pick some tasty crab apples for Ava the Connemara pony. Let's do our pony poles, legs wide hands together. Great stuff. Let's do Ava getting the apples from the ground. And another one. Picking up 
a big apple. Some pears, plums and blackberries should stop Danny the pig from being moany. Let's do our Danny the pig pose again. Knees together, bring them wide apart. Now Danny's going to reach up for some of the lovely, lovely turkey, the fruit. Let's go. Let me get some more. One last time. Oh, super job. Olivia the Dexter cow will love a bundle of delightful fresh cut wheat. Remember our cow pose? Let's go again. Some parsnip swedes and onions will be a treat for Geordie Flynn, the Galway sheep. Ready sheep? Tuck your head in. <laughs> and again. <laughs> One last time. <laughs> Amy the farmyard hen is sure to wallop up some crunchy hazelnuts and Kira, the old Irish goat will gobble these turnipy. Be careful, she headbutts. Ready, and to all fours. Kick back one leg. And then the other. Turning, we're gonna go the other side. Be careful now, she headbutts. And other way. One leg, and then the other. And sit back down. Then Shay, the cheeky stoat, comes out from the big hawthorn tree to ask Lily May if there's room for one more at the harvest feast. Right, stoats. One leg out in front of the other, bending into your leg, and reach those arms up. Very good, bring legs together, we're going to swap sides. So bending into that front knee, back leg is straight, and lifting those arms up either side, like a cheeky stoat. Of course, the more the merrier, the children answer, with a big grin. Johnny sets the table on a fallen oak tree and says, let's begin. Lily Mae calls everyone to the face that. And they sit around the table, the buzzards perch on the branches and the starlings on the electricity table. So all the animals that we just met sit around a table made from an oak tree and think of all the wonderful food that they can have a lovely farmyard feast on. Well done. The ducks on the pond beside them quack quack in an angry protest. They want some yummy brown soda bread. They only like the best. Everyone says a big thank you to Johnny and Lily May. They tuck into all the tasty beer as Rua says hooray. Ready ducks. Demanding some soda bread. Down low. Quack, quack. Mm, they sound a bit angrier than that, I think. Quack, quack. Your turn. Quack, quack. One last time. Quack, quack. Super. Kira, the clever goat, smells Granny's apple tart and plans how to get her way. I would love to taste a real apple tart, she says, just to mark this special day. Of course, says Lily Mae happily, thinking the grown-ups won't mind. She runs down the yard and takes the tart from behind the window blind. Ready, Kira? 
Remember our goat. Going for the apple tart this time. Careful, she might have but two. Kicking her leg out. Another one. Going for some apple tart. Another side. This way. Super. Let's see what happens next. They have the most amazing feast and share stories, jokes and rhymes. The guests thank the children for memories that will last their lifetimes. As the sun is setting, the men return from the fields. Let's sit down, nice and comfy, legs out wide. The harvest is complete and they're looking forward to their meals. Where on earth's the soda bread for the soup? Thought Mammy. The workers gather in Granny's kitchen, thankful for the food from the land. They eat the meal that has been prepared so lovingly by hand. But when it's time for the dessert, Granny stands and scratches her head. I left the apple tart on the windowsill to cool, she says. Oh, oh, says Lily May, starts to blush and her heart sinks. We had it at our harvest feast, thought Bronerm, I didn't think. Johnny explains about poor hungry Danny the pig. Remember Danny the pig? The back. Knees together and out wide. Let's close our legs and open. And one last time, children. Close and open. Well done. You guys can stay lying on your back if you'd like. Ha ha, Grandad laughs. He really fooled you big. Of course I fed the animals. I do so every day. They were messing with you to have some spree and play. The kitchen fills with laughter and the children tell Grandad about their day. When I was your age, I believed every word those clever animals would say. Later, after cleaning up, they brush their teeth and climb into Granny's spare beds. They drift away to dreamland as Granny and Grandad place a gentle kiss upon their heads. So just like Lily Mae and Johnny McGorry grabbing your blanket, placing it over you. If you want, get your eye pillow now and just making yourself nice and comfortable. You can stay lying down here. And taking a deep breath in and out. We're going to take a body scan here. Imagine there's a beautiful orange light. And this orange light is filled with relaxation. It's filled with peace and love. And imagine this orange light works its way in through your feet, relaxes your feet, in through your legs, your tummy. It fills your tummy with a beautiful light and relaxes your tummy up into your chest and fills your heart. Down your right arm, down your left and up into your neck and fills your head. From head to toe, you are filled with a beautiful, orange, peaceful, loving, relaxing light. And stretching your arms up and overhead, giving yourself a big squeeze, a big hug and slowly making your way back up to seated. We 
going to pick an angel card, a little message from our angels before we finish for today. So let's see what message our angels have for us today. Oh, white feather. When you find a white feather, your angels are very close. Say to yourself, my angels are close to me. Thank you everyone for joining me for today's yoga class. I hope you enjoyed it.